Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So, just want to make sure that everyone understands today we have to pace ourselves. <laughs> It's been my privilege to know Steve and Margaret Pace for the past 25 years. If it had not been for Margaret's mother, I don't know how this would have happened. But we met them through her mother, and from that time until now, it has been an increasing appreciation as to how these two have come together in life, they've raised a family, they've had their life opportunities present to them what life has presented, and how they have chosen to live it from then to now causes me to have a deep, heartfelt love and appreciation for who they are as spiritual beings clothed in bodies of earth. It is with this deep love and appreciation that I now present to you Margo and Steve Pace, who shall give us their awareness of life with regard to miracles. Please.
to me that everything was going to be okay. Well, the next morning, early, my sister-in-law called me up to say, can't believe that Stephen's intracranial pressure has gone down. Wow. Anyway, he was in intensive care for about three more weeks at San Francisco General. And then he went to Mills Rehab for two months, and then a step-down unit called Transitions in Berkeley. During all this time, he had to learn how to stand up again, how to even sit up again, how to eat, and how to walk. In fact, when he was at Transitions in Berkeley, he said they put a harness on him and led him around the streets like a dog. He felt like a dog. Well, the next few years, we underwent, well, he went, underwent a lot more therapy, and he learned to finally successfully go out into the community safely, walking by himself. And he also learned to use his power tools. But alas, he could never return to his beloved work at Bechtel, and he said this was like he lost his identity. He also could not drive. Well, when he couldn't return to Bechtel, it kind of made me think, in fact, the past few years, whether this could have really been a miracle, because his administrative assistant and the man that took over from him to take the job over from him died of cancer a few years later. <coughs> Doctors, when they see his MRI, say they cannot believe that he is not sitting in a chair just staring into space. That's how severe his injury was. Now fast forward to March of this year. Stephen fractured his shoulder really, really badly. In the hospital, they did a CAT scan of it. It showed part of his right lung, and in the lung was a small mass. It turned out that this was a metastasized renal cancer left over from his bout of cancer in 2008. We had been, he had been having x-rays yearly because this is where the cancer metastasizes next and nothing ever showed up. So if it hadn't been for the CAT scan, we wouldn't have seen it when it was really small. He was able to have this treated recently with radiation because it was so small. And he has just completed this as of this week. So here we are again. <laughs> Bad situation or miracle, right? Then in 2001, Stephen started taking part in a program called English in Action at Stanford. This is a program that helps foreign students with their English and also adapt to the community. And during this time, Stephen did this for 10 years, he was able to meet students from Russia, from Hungary, from Brazil, Peru, China, and Japan. His very first partner was a man from Japan here with his wife and a small child. And over the three years that they were here, he became very good friends with this man. In fact, our families became good friends. And um, recently, in fact, a year ago, the man brought his son, whom he had never met, on a whirlwind tour to California. And he said part of the important part of the tour was to see Stephen and have him meet his son. In 2005, we heard a television program about traumatic brain injured vets returning from the Middle East. And the VA in Palo Alto said that they needed volunteers. So we thought, oh, this would be a great thing for us to do. Well, Stephen called the VA and they referred us to the Mid Peninsula Brain Injury Association, of which we joined for about six years. And there we made many friends. In fact, we became very dear friends with the the leaders of the group. And then in 2011, Stephen's voice was getting weaker because he is suffering from post-traumatic Parkinson's brought on by the brain injury. And he was unable to do the Stanford program anymore. And then his voice got even weaker, and by 2014, we decided he needed to go to a speech pathologist, which we went to, and she said, well, he should speak louder, okay? And he <laughs> take some therapy sessions. So we were like, okay. Let's just, we'll, we'll kind of think about this. And then at the end of the year, we took a friend of ours to a Christmas Eve family church service, and he has advanced idiopathic Parkinson's. Well, at the church service, 
the choir director stood up and he said, oh, everybody needs to really stand up and sing, you know, Nick, but you need to really breathe deeply and you'll sing better and you'll actually probably live longer. So that didn't make too much sense to me. So the choir, the, they started to sing the carols and our friend stood up better than he had for ages. His voice was stronger than I had heard it for months. And I think the most amazing and heartfelt outcome of all of this was the pure joy on his face. Well, then it sunk in. Okay, we could improve our voices, our, the strength of our voices, improve our health, and have fun singing. So I, I asked Stephen, would you like to take singing lessons, something we had never done? And he said, oh, that would be really fun. And I'm, you know, in all of January, we looked for someone to teach us, and we didn't find anybody. And so we finally, we went to the dentist, beginning of February, <laughs> and had, I was telling the dental hygienist, well, actually, the dental hygienist was telling me that her daughter had just graduated from um, graduate school in uh, uh, speech pathology. And I said, oh, that's really interesting. I got this idea, which really isn't a new idea, that we could strengthen our voice and improve our health and have fun singing, but I haven't been able to find anybody to teach us. So she said, oh, there's this gentleman <laughs> who comes in here who's a patient of mine, and I'll call him and find out if he's interested in, in teaching you. And I thought, okay, great, but it'd be fun. And so I thought, well, I might hear from her in a week, and I might have to call her back, I don't know what. But anyway, um, I got home, we got home, and the phone rings, and Lori's calling us with Evaldo's telephone number and name, and I called him up, and he said yes, he would be happy to meet with us, and I explained the situation, why we wanted to sing, and yes, he would be happy to instruct us, and he lives five minutes from us. <laughs> is getting stronger. We've become really good friends with his family and we're having a wonderful time. So, you know, miracles and giving, this has been part of our lives the last 25 years. And now, I don't know, I, Evaldo has been suffering, he's a asthmatic and he's been suffering from a bout of this. Are you able to speak to people and tell them a little bit about him? So I would like to have him come up and explain a little bit about his background and his teaching methods. Okay. Talk about a blessing. I've had many in my life. I've had something to feel, nothing directly. But when they came into my life, it was that, it's like a, um, like a pressure on your back. I don't know if any of you have experienced that, but I've had three or four times it's happened to me. It happened to, to me when they came into my life. What an inspiration. <laughs> we must applaud them for what they've done. With that. He said, uh, well, what's your name? I said, Evaldo Del Pagento. He said, is that Italian? So I gave him my profile. I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said that's not Italian. He goes on to tell me, he says, now, he said, you know, I don't want you to get me ready for, for Broadway. He said, I just want you to tweak my, my voice a little bit. <laughs> so we've been tweaking his voice for about a year and a half. It's such a pleasure. I look forward to having him over. We have a great time together. No, do you want me to tell you something about how you started singing and your father recognized your asthmatic problem? I was asthmatic from the time I was six months old. And um, my dad thought when I was about 16 that I should take voice lessons to strengthen my, my lungs. And I, I took the lesson, and as I was taking the lesson, my voice kept improving, and I got interested in opera. So I'm going to try to shorten this. So um, I kept taking lessons, and I, I had a fine teacher in San Francisco. So I was taking voice lessons from a teacher and going to the conservatory 
in San Francisco also. And little by little, my voice developed, and um, I got to the point where I thought I could uh, have a career with it. Let me, let me go back a little bit. Rosemary, my first wife, had died in 2002, and I all met in the San Francisco Opera Chorus. And um, so when it came to about the mid 50s, uh, they were both going to uh, becoming teachers, and I was trying to become a tenor and sing the, the leading roles of all these different operas. So during the day, I can't study all day, so I would do the cooking for them, and at night um, we would have a meal, and they would help me learn the roles. Soprano, mezzo soprano, baritone, bass, it didn't make any difference. They filled in for me, and, you know, so I could learn the operas. So in uh, 1958, I thought I was on my way, and they helped me a great deal, okay? More you remember. So I set up uh, having 10 operas cold and maybe another 15 that I could have gotten together, but uh, maybe, maybe two or three weeks I would be able to perform it. So then Ruth and I got married in 1960. We went across the country and uh, we got to New York. And um, by the way, let me preface this. Before that, uh, 1959, I did the Maryland program. And I should have won, yeah. but I followed up on the aria from um, from Carmen, the uh, beautiful. <laughs> Many, many areas. Now let's get back to. Let's see. 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 Let's see.
Yes. So you've been teaching for 20 years. Yes, I've been teaching for only 25 been... years. Yes. Uh, wonderful lesson. Yeah. Uh, I've never thought of teaching, but my, my teacher's wife and daughter said I should teach. Oh, I went to Hawaii. I so I brought me first person to read one of the and the rest is history. And now I have these wonderful people. You know, I've got maybe 20 students. And they sing quite well. So maybe I can show. Well, you may see this. Yeah. He's going to sing a song. Yeah. And show yeah. how his voice has really yeah. improved. He has improved a lot. about the Metaphysical Church of Enlightenment or the Rodin Foundation, please go to our website at www.rodin.org. If you have been inspired by the revelations shared in these podcasts, please donate to the Rodin Foundation's ongoing efforts to help others help themselves at www.rodin.org.